Harrison with you asking you the following question. What would happen if everything were inverted and it were illegal to be straight? <gasps> straight ahead. I've spent a decade taking a bite out of conspiracy theories, unraveling urban legends, and grappling with worldwide top secret issues. I've even racked up some of their awards, all while ferreting out the bottom line. Uh-oh. On all topics, controversial, bizarre, and taboo. Interviewing movers and shakers, agitators and muckrakers. But that doesn't answer my question. That is all I'm answering. With me, Carrie Harrison, as your guide. Harrison with you, live streamcasting and FM broadcasting on the West Coast, East Coast, and various FM radio stations in Europe. I want to introduce to you a couple of filmmakers who've made a, well, it's a provocative film for sure. Also, it apparently has the most attractive people ever put on camera before. That's an actual complaint, if you've ever heard that big a complaint. But it's called Love is All You Need. And the premise is, what if it were a sin to be straight and that homosexual, I'm saying it like a, a Southern Baptist preacher, homosexual <laughs> love were the non-sin, but heterosexual love were the sin. What would the world look like? So I want to introduce to you Kim Rocco Shields, the director or directress, if I want to get slapped, but I won't say that, <laughs> of this film. Uh, next to her is David Tillman, also the co-writer. Mm -hmm. And uh, what a provocative film. That's a great word for it. We like that word. We it like does, provocative. Yeah, yes. it does get people thinking and talking, and ultimately that's what we need to be doing right now. Yeah, and, and most good filmmaking, storytelling, Billy Shakespeare, Jeffy Chaucer, all of our little <laughs> friends from 8th grade, <laughs> 11th grade too, they knew that, that the best storytelling comes from personal insight into a situation. And I'm guessing, not that your publicist sent me any notes in advance, but I'm guessing somebody here has had personal experience with bullying. That would be this gentleman right Un here. Yes. Unfortunately, me. Yes. So, um, you know, in, when uh, Rocco and I first started working on this project, like six, almost seven years ago, um, she had this idea to do this inverted world and it was an outcry to what was all this bullying that was happening. But key to this was the realism and infusing realism into the story. It had The inversion has been done before, but only in a comedic sense. Mm -hmm. Right. So we want to make this a dramatic story. So I shared with her my story of bullying. I'm going to ask an easy favor of you that has nothing to do with anything. Can you push your microphone away a little bit? Sure thing. There we go. Um, so... Um, so I shared with her yeah. my story, and she was like in tears, and she said the only thing that would make this better cinematically, because she's always thinking in terms of cinematic language, yeah. instead of it being a boy, to make it a blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl right. who has the word hetero written across her forehead. So in my case, it was another word. Um, and I Go thought ahead and it say it. It's because we faggot. can't see it. <gasps> yeah. Okay. Um, Which so simply means a bundle of sticks. A bundle of sticks. That's what we're told. Yes, as opposed to a bundle of joy. Yes. That's right. Uh, and so that's kind of how the story yes. came about. I mean, I shared my story with her. We, we did a little bit of an inversion to make it better cinematically, better mm -hmm. storytelling. Um, and all this time, it, you know, as a child, you wonder why am I, why, is, why me? Why me? Yeah, yeah. And now, after meeting Rocco, I know why me. And right. why I have this opportunity to share the story with her and for us to share the story with the world. It's interesting because right now, and uh, we're dealing with a recent election where this is no longer sort of on the school campus occasionally, or it's on CNN now and then, or Rachel Maddow might mention it. This is now the national zeitgeist. This is all of us. All of us feel bullied. Doesn't matter what side anyone is on. We have this new thing called the alt-right, which is, uh, you know, proudly, in fact, if you don't mind, Steve Bannon, who's now an occupant of the White House, who uh, boasts that the, uh, uh, has declared a Breitbart, his website that is now the go-to platform for the American Nazi Party and such, uh, says unofficially, we're the platform for the alt-right. And he says, darkness is good. Dick Cheney, Darth Vader, Satan. Now that's real power. So this is coming out of the White House now, and we know that the Vice President is, shall we say, um, not a homophile at all. So 
whatever I'm trying to say, I think your your movie is more relevant now than you'd anticipated when you sat down to write it and shoot it. Because now all of us are in the crosshairs, aren't we? Yeah, and ultimately what this film creates is this empathy, and yeah. it bridges the gap between these two polarized points of view. Yeah. I honestly want to challenge them to watch this film mm -hmm. and think differently after. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing, is once you've been uh, on the, the, the back end of the stick, you change your mind a lot. Like, if it's all theoretical, like a, a, a psychologist who's never actually been in the trenches, like a social worker, where it's all theoretical, they can have a kind of intellectual compassion. But if you've actually seen what it looks like in there and been through it, you're a real eyewitness. Much as a Holocaust survivor is an eyewitness of what real fascism looks like. Um, and so I like anything that talks about what's going on relevantly in the world today. And again, to your credit, not that you had any prognostications of pandemic whoopee or could augur a crystal ball of how things would go, but now we have 327 million people in this country who are confused as hell and all wonder what's going to happen next. And you're telling a story of here's what happens next. Yep, absolutely. So what have you learned personally about this experience? Well, we actually just got back from traveling the country. Um, we decided to, well, I was crazy and I saw it becoming more and more relevant. And I said, you know what? We have a, a fan base already because it's based on a short film that yeah. went viral on the internet all by itself. I said, we need to pull this outside of Hollywood who wanted to hold it back for another year and release it immediately and throughout the nation because this film creates results and it creates change. I had one woman come find me after its very first screening and say, I had to come find you because my mother saw your film for its world premiere last night yeah. and she called me today for the first time in 20 years. Wow. She now knows what it's like to be me. And wow. that was like... That it just keeps showing its face, it keeps showing its face. So we just got back from traveling and showcasing it in cities where we feel really need it. So let me ask you a science question. <laughs> uh, I, I know that you're a gay guy mm -hmm. because we got it, we figured it out. It's possible that you are also on the team. Mm -hmm. I am on the team, little disclosure what? here. My Crazy talk. My twin sister, or twister, is a lesbian. That means 100% of my parents' offspring are enchanted. I'm a fan of why is it like this. Have you come up with the assessment that this is a natural phenomenon, being gay, or did you wake up on a Thursday and go, <gasps> yeah, being straight sucks. I want a penis. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a new day of the week. But um, <laughs> actually, I, I think from my personal experience, yeah. uh, trying to hide it as a child, yeah. I, I knew there were things that were different about me, um, but I thought that, you know, oh, he's cute and she's cute. So uh, the social norms, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but then as I was, you know, growing up and thinking about it, um, finding myself really still kind of attracted to both, um, but felt more at ease with men. And then, um, then when I met the first guy that I fell in love with, I fed help, fell head over heels. And I had been actually very active in my church, Catholic church. And I'll bet they were thrilled. <laughs> well, you know, you go through that, that experience of like, you know, again, why me, God? Or, and then I realized that love is not wrong. This is the sin theme throughout the movie, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Yes. And so I turned my back on the church. And I still am a very spiritual person. And I think Rocco can talk about her personal spiritual growth during the process of this yeah. but um, I firmly believe that God intended us to be part of the of the plan or there wouldn't be so many of us well you know th this is actually a very good point because for those of us who like science which is all of us you can't make a movie without appreciating gravity science electrons so you like science too 10% um, of the animal population is same sexual by design we don't know why 10% of seagulls 10% uh, of penguins, 83% of giraffes, by the way. I'd like to think it's the long necks. But there's some design, I think it's probably to reach the fruit. Look at all these double meanings. But it's kind of interesting how it all works, you know? And it has always been this way, from Alexander the Great, who conquered the known world, him and his boyfriends, Aristotle, 
you know, the greatest philosophers who ever lived all seem to have boyfriends for some reason or another. Um, it's only until about 680 AD, the Senate of Rome, where they decided, wait a minute, this is bad because people are doing stuff outside of the church. And there's only a handful of people who can read and write and hold the gold. And if you're giving it all to your friends, this has got to stop. So um, I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but I'm really glad you made your film. Because anything that acts as school for us, the way House of Cards acts as Government 101 for many people on Netflix, you're going to be the version of school of an example of what it looks like when. And since most people, a lot of people, maybe most people haven't actually experienced the physical when, through your film, they will get to experience it. And that is a textbook that will live forever. I think you should talk about the empathy thing, because... That's so key to what our film is. What this film does is we really kept a set of rules, and especially in the direction I kept a set of yeah. rules, and that is, one, that gay doesn't look like gay. Gay. Gay looks like people, and that's really what it does look like. Yeah. People, well, it's people doing it. Yeah, people in our community and uh, other think that a gay world would look like rainbows in the sky and everyone dancing around singing show tunes. We've tried. I know. Um, but, you know, that's not the reality. And the idea behind this was to create a very real look at our reality with that yeah. one small change. And what would be then our society? The one conceit I took was that I felt that men and women would be on equal playing fields. So if there's um, someone in a, if there's a female, they could be in a men's role or a women's role. For example, a preacher or a football player. You know, there's yeah. a female football player uh, that's the lead actress of our film. Uh, played by Brianna Evigan, and she is quarterback of the women's football team, and the men's football team happens to suck. And so it's kind <laughs> of uh, her journey through it. And It's, it's, it's very, uh, and we, we have to wrap up here, but it's very Gene Roddenberry in that wonderful way, is in the 1960s, when everything was forbidden, he took all the enemies of the world, put them together on the bridge of a peace ship, and sent them out to do good work. And you've done the same thing. You've put all the different players all together, mixed it up, but it actually works out and, and has a happy ending. And, well, of sorts, anyway. <laughs> it has an educational ending. It has <laughs> a real <laughs> yes. ending. Well, to me, that's happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anytime I'm, I'm woken up and I walk away with information, it's much better than being stuck in the dark. I want to thank you both for coming on. We've been talking to uh, Kim Rocco Shields. She is the director and co-writer, and David Tillman, also the co-writer, co-writer, and the co-writer, whatever that means, of "Love Is All You Need." And uh, I guess it's a true statement: "Love Is All You Need." Yeah, shameless post. It's yeah. available on iTunes yes, yes. right now. Yes, when yes. you watch this or yep. listen to it, iTunes. Love Is All You Need the Thank you, and thank you. <laughs>